Did you know Shuckle's the slowest Pokemon? Did you know that Rhydon's the first Pokemon ever designed? Oh, you do? Good. Well then, I'm gonna tell you some Pokemon facts that I think you don't know. I went out of my way to find facts about Pokemon that if you were to tell a seasoned Pokemon fan, they would have no idea, and I'm genuinely curious how many people are aware of these, so let me know in the comments. But anyways, I'm Blue Boy Finn, and let's get into this. I'm gonna start this video off with one of the coolest facts on this list, and that is the gift Pokemon in Heart Gold Soul Silver that went undiscovered for over 10 years until the year 2020, and was only found when Reddit user that goes by Alucard the Guy was attempting to softlock their game by trapping themselves in Sinewood City without a Pokemon that knows a surf or a way to obtain one. As a softlock prevention method, there is an NPC in the Cyanwood Pokemon Center that gives you a gift tentacle if your game meets those conditions, and it can even be shiny hunted. This is one of the coolest things ever to me, and it makes me wonder what other mysteries still lie in these games even after all these years. If you enter Rock Tunnel in Pokemon Yellow and happen to level up your Pikachu to level 26, where it learns Thunderbolt, you'll be greeted by this interesting animation that plays and lights up the cave temporarily. In Generation 5 of Pokemon, the best generation, when you are on any route in the game, the drums of the music will only play when you are moving. If you're standing still, the drums will completely stop. I actually recorded a little bit of gameplay so you can see. So we all know in Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness and Colosseum, there are some interesting changes to shiny forms of some Pokemon. But there's one in particular that I find to be incredibly interesting, and that Pokemon is Vaporeon. Huge shout out to one of my best friends in the community, Mr. Alpha, who's hunted shiny Eevee in this game and told me about this. When you evolve your Eevee into a Vaporeon, it acquires this interesting snowy aura that literally no other Pokemon has in this game or any game since. Although it's not exclusive to just the shiny version, I think it makes the shiny version look incredible. Next fact, Hue from Pokemon Black and White 2 is the best rival in all of Pokemon. That's totally not my opinion and an irrefutable fact. Okay, maybe that's my opinion, but he's the only rival to punch an evil team member, and that's pretty badass. I mean, come on. The three legendary dogs, although not obtainable in Ruby and Sapphire, it's possible they could have planned to have been. The reason for that is there's a rendition for the legendary dog theme present in the game, in the classic Hoenn sound font, and you're listening to it right now. But sadly, it went unused in the final release, and that honestly makes me kind of sad, because these are some of my favorite legendary Pokemon ever created. But there's also a few more unused tracks in the game from Johto region, another being Route 38. So maybe the team was just having fun remixing these absolute jammers. Damn, son, where'd you find this? You probably know about Shucky, the gift Shuckle in the Johto region, but did you know it can't be shiny in Heart Gold Soul Silver, but it can in Gold Silver Crystal? Black and White 2 are the only main series games where your protagonist is canonically older than usual. Following that idea, there's multiple themes in the game targeted for a slightly more mature audience. For example, you can get a romantic partner in Black and White 2, Yancey or Curtis, and if you follow their side quests, you can get some Pokemon traded to you that you otherwise can't find anywhere in the Unova region, such as Ralts, Spiritomb, and Togepi. Pokemon Masters. No, not that one. Pokemon Masters Arena, the PC game. Never played it? Good, don't. It's probably the worst game ever made. It was a crappy kids game, full of the easiest puzzles and mini games that I can promise you couldn't stand to play for more than 10 seconds. Well, in this game, one of the quiz questions is, which one of these Pokemon cannot be found in the Safari Zone? In the image, they are clearly referring to Staryu, as you can get Heracross and Ruby Sapphire Emerald and Pinsir and Fire and Leaf Green. Well, guess what, Pokemon Masters Arena, if that even is your real name? Technically speaking, that is kind of false. In Pokemon Gold and Silver's fabled unreachable Safari Zone, if you glitch inside of it and fish into the water, guess what you can get? Yeah, that's right. Star you, bitch! The Regis have some of the coolest cryptic puzzles to obtain them in any Pokemon game. But did you know these puzzles were inspired by the hyping craze of the mysterious Mew under the truck fiasco? 
And speaking of regis, did you know they're all based on time periods in the real world? Regi is representing the Ice Age, Regirock representing the Stone Age, and Registeel representing the Iron Slash Bronze Age. And the two newest additions, Regilecki and Regidrago, representing the Modern and Dark Ages respectively. Speaking of Gen 3, there is also a 1 out of 64 chance to see a hiker climbing Mount Chimney when you ride the ski lift. And I got way too excited when I found one. Should say in your uh... Oh, there he is! Oh, <laughs> that was exciting! Did you see him? <laughs> it's 1 out of 64. <laughs> Sorry, that was so loud. This next one is incredibly interesting to me. So in Generation 4, things in the game change depending on what day you play the game. Days like Director Junichi Masuda's birthday increase the rate which eggs will hatch by a whopping 10%. And important dates like holidays such as Christmas Eve, Independence Day, Veterans Day, and many many more all increase the rate in which you encounter wild Pokemon by 5% while days that world tragedies occurred, the encounter rate decreases by 10%. Although this is a seemingly meaningless change, this feature is one of those things that adds a certain kind of magic and care to the older Pokemon games that I wish was still carried in the series. When you're making curry in Pokemon Sword and Shield, there's a chance a Pokemon will wander into your camp for you to obtain, and they can even be shiny. Did you know that Ken Sugimori, the man who drew all the official art for literally every single Pokemon, also created the Pokemon logo? This dude's art is incredibly iconic, I bet his only regret is drawing this guy. I bet you didn't know that Pokemon came out with a typing game for the Nintendo DS that came with a keyboard to connect to your DS. The game was called Pokemon Typing Adventure and the soundtrack was actually so good. You're actually listening to one of the songs off it right now. Did you know there are berries in the main series Pokemon games that are exclusive to Japan? In Generation 3, there were 12 berries distributed by the e-reader cards. If you were to theoretically obtain an e-reader card and an e-reader and transfer one of the berries up to Generation 5 or beyond, they would become the mysterious Enigma Berry, which if held by a Pokemon has the following effects. When a Pokemon holds an Enigma Berry and is hit by a super effective move, it will recover one-fourth of its HP. Some of you might know that Sword and Shield's shiny hunting method is actually broken and you do not get the right amount of boosted shiny odds after 500 KOs, but that's not the first time something like this has happened, even in the main series Pokemon games. In Pokemon Emerald, there's a coding error that makes the game behave as if it has a dead save battery, meaning you can't soft reset for a shiny Pokemon, because instead of generating new frames, every time you soft reset or just boot up your game, Emerald always puts you back to frame zero. So unless you got pretty lucky and there's a shiny frame in your first 100 frames, soft resetting for a shiny is useless. If you want to know more about this and some ways to get around it, LJ, Shiny Collector, has some great videos about it, link in description. There is a very interesting item only present in Pokemon Gold Silver Crystal, only found in Cerulean Cave called the Berserk Gene, that raises your Pokemon's attack by two stages, but also confuses you, kind of like using the move Swagger on yourself. This is probably a reference to a popular theory about the famous berserker mushrooms that Vikings would eat to enter a disassociative trance-like state and battle non-stop. Kind of a dark thing to bring to a Pokemon game. The touch boxes in Diamond and Pearl on Nintendo DS were created to be larger so you could touch them with your fingers. Some staff originally did not like this idea because they thought the DS would get dirty with Gamer Dog. In March of 2005, a Pokemon theme park opened in Nagoya Aichi, Japan, called Poke Park, complete with bumper cars, ferris wheels, trains, and all assortments of rides. But most interestingly is you could also receive exclusive gift Pokemon. You could bring your Game Boy Advance and connect to machines that distributed the Pokemon via an egg. And they weren't any random Pokemon either. Although not legendary, they possessed special moves that otherwise these Pokemon would never be able to learn such as Taylo with Feather Dance, a Pichu with Follow Me, and an Iggly Buff with Tickle. Sadly, Poke Park shut down only four months after opening in September of that same year, but one very intriguing possibility remains. Because of the way these gift Pokemon were received via egg, the Pokemon values such as nature, gender, and IVs were different each time, meaning that they could be shiny. And I'd like to think that at the very least, just one kid during these few months received a shiny gift Pokemon. 
And if this were the case, and for example, someone hatched a shiny Taylo from the event, because of the small window of time these were available and the multitude of Pokemon distributed by the event, it would most likely be the only shiny Taylo in the entire world that knows Feather Dance legitimately. And I think that's pretty cool. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed hanging here, subscribing and liking tells me there's people out here who enjoy this kind of thing and it inspires me to make more. Also come say hello on my Twitch. I'm probably live right now playing Pokemon. But that's it for me. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.